Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Hello, Knife Junkies, and welcome to episode number 121 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. It's our midweek supplemental episode, and I'm Jim the Knife Newbie Person. And I'm Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. Hopefully by now you know that this is the place for knife newbies and knife junkies to learn everything about knives and knife collecting. If you happen to be here with us for the first time, you've just stumbled on the show, a friend has shared it with you, we certainly thank you for being here. If you'd like to uh, subscribe, just go to thenifejunkie.com slash subscribe. You'll find links to uh, podcast players and apps there that you can subscribe to, and you can also subscribe to the Knife Junkie's uh, newsletter right from that uh, same page as well. And also let you know that the podcast is also on YouTube, and if you are not yet subscribed to the Knife Junkie's YouTube channel, you can do that Do that at thenifejunkie.com slash YT subscribe. But, but as always, a full midweek supplemental show. We've got a lot to talk about this week. Uh, a couple of things we want to talk about first. We've got Knife Life news coming up, the state of the collection this week, where you're going to give us an update on the bad monkey. Got to got to hear about that. Uh, Emerson Appalachian also have a little bit of uh, miscellaneous uh, banter at the end where we're going to talk about uh, knives and New York City. So uh, that'll also always uh, be interesting, but mm-hmm. uh, a, lot, a lot of good stuff coming up this week. Yeah, yeah. But first, I want to talk about the town hall we have coming up. Absolutely. So Saturday, June the 20th, this at Saturday. noon Eastern Standard Time. Yep, yeah, this Saturday. I, I always have to mention the date because right. uh, just just Yeah, well, it's sure. good because if folks are listening after the 20th, they want to, you know, know that it's not this Saturday, but... Exactly. But they can watch it on replay if they don't get it. Yeah, now they can search it in YouTube. Anyway, it's going to be a town hall, another town hall, similar to the one we did in April on April 18th, where we had 17 guests and four co-hosts. And uh, five and a half hours of knife talk. This is a scaled down version of that, an intimate version of that. We're going to have uh, two knife makers for about two hours. It will probably run a little long, uh, but we're going to have the legendary Andrew Demko and the legendary Greg Lightfoot on. And it's an opportunity for you to uh, talk, ask questions, uh, um, ask, uh, give compliments and impressions of, of their knives to them through chat. Or if you have a webcam on your laptop, iPhone, or iPad, uh, tablet device thing, you can come right on the show and talk directly to the knife makers. So definitely check out the town hall with uh, Andrew Demko and Greg Lightfoot uh, this coming Saturday, June 20th at noon Eastern Standard Time. Right. That's on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel, live video show. Again, the knifejunkie.com slash YouTube. And uh, I know I have a face for radio, so I often don't want to be on video. So uh, if you have your smartphone, you can just come on with audio only. You can actually disable the video and we can just hear your voice and you can ask your question if you're uh, camera shy like I am. But uh, it's very easy if you've got a smartphone or, as Bob said, webcam, even just a laptop, any kind of device, hop in. Love to have you join the uh, conversation just for two or three minutes. Ask your question, interact with uh, the knife makers, designers, and uh, should be fun. Looking forward to it again this Saturday, June 20th, noon on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Uh, some announcement news I think you want to share with us a little bit here, Bob. You you didn't even want to tell me uh, in the show notes. I kept asking you, what what is this you're going to talk about? But uh, something you want to announce. Oh, uh, it's not an announcement. It's just something I'm excited about. Oh, this is the first about, okay. time this has happened to me in my knife uh, career. Mm. Uh, a company company that I love uh, reached out to me and asked if, if I would take one of their prototypes um, and review it wow. and uh and they will put it on their channel and i will put it on my channel when it's ready and uh, it, yeah and it's uh it's for the medford knife slip joint that's coming out called wow. the, the gentleman jack one well you jack are a gentleman <laughs> i am indeed <laughs> and uh uh i love medford knives and geez I, I hope i'm not spilling some beans i shouldn't be but uh yep that'll be coming to me and uh uh, well, we all know that they've been coming out with one for a while, but uh, I'm really excited to get my hands on it. Nice. Um, so 
that's it. I just, it's, it's bragging. That's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> bragging. And, and I know, I know that this might be standard, uh, like the standard course for a lot of knife reviewers, uh, out there, but, uh, for me, it's not. So it's very exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Well, congratulations. That's cool news. And I uh, look forward to seeing that, uh, that video review. I know you've been, uh, pumping out a whole lot more uh, video reviews, state of the collections, those kind of things. It's it's a lot because we have two podcasts a week, Thursday Night Knives, plus you're also trying to do, uh, you know, knife videos, collection yeah. videos, unboxings, and those kind of things. So, uh, yeah. Well, but but for this in particular, uh, you know, I'm extremely excited <laughs> and, and honored. I think it's, uh, it's oh, yes, you absolutely. know, we, we've spoken with Greg a few times. He was on uh, our town hall uh, in April and man, he really energizes the crowd. All right. And does he and his outfit make an amazing knife? Yeah. But the answer right. is yes. And I'm very much <laughs> looking forward to this. So. All right. Well, it'll be uh, interesting to see the review. I'm sure it'll be a favorable, favorable review. But, uh, you know, in, in your uh, duties as a reviewer, you do have to point out, you know, what yeah. you don't like about it or things like that. So be interesting to see. And, and I think that is, uh, I mean, it's just about being honest. And I think that that's yeah. what, uh, that's what they're looking for, for sure. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what most companies are looking for when they do this, um, yeah. or when they take advantage of the pass around groups and get their knives in the hands of people early, then they can make last minute tweaks before mm -hmm. they go to market. You know, right. everyone keeps talking about this hot spot. Let's, let's uh, knock that down a little bit gotcha. before we yeah. make the final version. Well, uh, that'll be interesting. Again, look forward to on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel when that review comes out. We'll be sure to, of course, uh, let you know. Um, let's do some more selfish self-promotion if we can, Bob. Oh, please. Uh, <laughs> we, I know you and I behind the scenes have been talking about this for months, really. Uh, is, <laughs> yeah, uh, is starting a Knife Junkie Patreon account. Yeah. And um, I'll just turn it over to you to kind of give some of the details where we're, we're going to get that kicked off. Uh, yeah, well, I, I I finally, finally set up a Patreon account for uh, for the Knife Junkie podcast and channel um, just to help support having new knives come through and uh, support the the hosting costs for the podcast mm -hmm. and and, uh, you know, website and everything. Web, else. Yeah. Lighten the burden. I mean, I mean. You know, the, a lot of work goes into it and uh, um, just be nice to have a little bit of support in that way. And and at first, when we first started the podcast, I wanted to make sure that it was tenable and that it was going to be something that we loved and wanted to keep doing and something that I was actually – that you and I were actually providing value. And, you know, right. 120 episodes in, I, I feel like we're providing value. We're, we're providing – hope so, yeah. Like, like some, some pretty great views – into the minds of the people who are making these knives are all so into. And um, so I set up a Patreon account. Uh, uh, there are three levels of patronage, uh, you know, for a monthly pledge. Uh, $3 is uh, a traditional junkie. $5 is a tactical junkie. And uh, $10 a month is a gentleman or gentlewoman junkie. So those levels again? Uh, three, five, and 10. Okay. And uh, each one has its its little perks. You just go to the page and check it out. But really, it's about supporting the show and uh, and well, and the more you give, the more you have an opportunity to win knives. And there, there are other little perks. So oh, go check okay. it out. I'm I'm pretty excited about it, but it's the first time I've ever done it, so it's it feels right. a little odd. Okay, so that'll be at thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. That's p a t r e o n. Thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon, and you can uh, find all the details of Bob's. Uh, uh, group there and uh, if you can uh, love to have you uh, be a be a junkie with bob <laughs> and uh, help uh, help uh, support some of the uh, costs associated with putting on this show the live video show etc so uh, don't want to talk too much about it but just kind of throw it out there and uh, hope you're interested in joining you're listening to the knife junkie podcast and now here's the knife junkie with the knife life news well the first thing i want to talk about is an update to a story we talked about several months back. So Copus Designs uh, is releasing the second batch of their Elvia fixed blade knife. Uh, this is the Ed Calderon Elvia design that uh, Emerson Knives has just released their interpretation of, their folding Emerson uh, interpretation of. Uh, but this Copus Design Works uh, version is a um, is the same sort of small hawkbill blade on what looks kind of like a little fruit knife tactical fruit knife. 
and is sort of set up for edge in reverse grip fighting style. However, if you if you flip it around into the regular orientation, it would make a fantastic fruit knife, a peeler. What a combination, fighting knife and a fruit peeler. <laughs> well, that's the thing, because this is inspired by Ed Calderon's mother's knife that she carried and right. used all the time. Ed Calderon has a uh, a blog, famous blog, called Ed's Manifesto, uh, all about working on the border and, uh, and doing um, sort of uh, anti-narco uh, work for various uh, government agencies. He carried around this knife that his mother used to carry around. And his mother's name was Elvia, so they named the knife Elvia. Uh, so a number of different uh, – there's also a custom maker who also makes a version of the Elvia, whose name is slipping my mind again. Uh, but Copus Designs just came out with a new batch. And the, and the real USP to this is that it's a, it's, it's a, a mid-tech, but it's not a fancy materials mid-tech. It's an all-about work mid-tech. So it's got uh, a two-and-a-half-inch 154CM blade love 154 cm and it's got a molded frn handle so you don't think molded frn handle when you think of mid-tech you think of titanium you think of expensive materials and that kind of thing uh but this is all work and uh i can't wait to get this i don't i don't know i i, I okay when after, i say that, after after your spartan harsey yes after my spartan harsey they're coming out with the new acid wash uh, blade on this one. So check it out. It just went live on their website uh, on Friday, June 12th. So maybe when you're listening to this, it'll be sold out. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but definitely check it out if you want to get on that list. Okay. All it's right. It's got a little little Kydex sheath. You can wear it as a neck knife or on your belt. Yeah. Okay, cool. Peel your apple and then uh, go take care, care of somebody in the uh, dark alley as you're walking <laughs> on your way right. home. All right. That's right. That's what we like to do here in Knife Life News is kind of keep up with the uh, product drops and uh, new stuff happening in the knife world. And here's a company, Bob, that I I had not heard the name of. I don't think we've ever talked about here on the podcast. Terrain 365? Yes. Now, I know I've read about these guys, and I thought we may have mentioned their Nautilus knife a, a little mm, while back. Maybe so. I, if you're so. I'm old. I don't remember things. <laughs> I, too, am old, sir. That's why it's good <laughs> we work together. Uh, so... Terrain 365 is Michael Pagnino and Patrick Ma's company. They're both uh, knife maker and knife designers. You might recognize Pat, uh, Michael Pagnino's name from um, a number of Kaiser knives that he worked on. Uh, but they have this company called Terrain 365, and they are really hellbent on making knives that are impervious to rust, water, the elements. So all of their knives are waterproof, basically, or impervious to corrosion. And they have a new one out called the Mako, and it's a titanium frame lock flipper, but it employs uh, a new blade material that is um, proprietary to to uh, Terrain 365. It's called Teravantium, which I think is really cool. It's, it's a cobalt alloy. Teravantium, and apparently it has very, very high uh, edge edge retention uh, characteristics, and it's totally uncorrosive, non-corrosive, mm. I think is the word. Doesn't corrode. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, the bearing race is bronze in the pivot. The the pivots, uh, the uh, the bearings themselves are ceramic, as is the pivot ball. So everything about this, and and all the hardware is titanium. So everything about this Mako, which happens to be the fastest thing in the ocean, I believe, as well as the fastest shark, is waterproof. Uh, I believe they called it the Mako because as they kept tweaking the design, it it started to take on a more and more shark-like form. And if you, if you look at it, it does have a beautiful harpoon uh, drop point blade. And then uh, sort of midway down, the... Um, the flipper tab kind of nestles nicely in the in the forward guard of the handle, and it looks kind of like dors uh, not dorsal fins, but pectoral fins on a shark. Yeah, it definitely has a very shark like look. Hmm. Um, so looks in oh, and it also shoots out super fast when you hit that flipper tab. So you know, make up well. Speed. There you go. So uh, definitely an, an appropriately named company. Uh, I was thinking Terrain Three Sixty Five. You know what what does that mean? But if all of their knives are not corrosive or whatever that that makes a that's a that's a cool name it kind of says yeah. what they do then yeah yeah exactly and if you go to their website and you flip through their uh through their knives you see that they they all use that uh teravantium material uh for the blade and uh you know in a in a couple of 
cases like they they uh, they collaborated with uh, um, Prometheus Blade Works to do a version of their their famous knife uh, in in that Teravantium. So it it is very very cool material. Uh, mm-hmm. But also the otter slip joint. That's what it was. We talked about the otter slip joint, mm-hmm. uh, one that they make on this show. Well, the uh, blade material sounds something like out of a sci-fi movie, you know, <laughs> that uh, they're, you know, we have to go to this foreign planet out in the solar system to get this unique material to do something to save the earth or whatever. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like unobtainium or, or right. it's it's like uh, adamantium, you know, the claws of the Wolverine, of Wolverine the, uh, the superhero. I like Wolverine. I never got that deep into it to learn or remember <laughs> right. the the knife, the claw material. But uh, it's Jim, that's, they're called adamantium. As, as a matter of fact, his whole skeleton is lined with it. Well, uh, there you go, knife junkies. Now you know. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to move on to the new Benchmade 85 billet. It's an integral ballet song. Now, actually, in saying integral ballet song, I think I'm technically incorrect. It's a ballet song where both handle sides are milled out of one piece. So I guess both sides are integrals, but it is a hmm. really cool Benchmade. And at the core of Benchmade is the Balasong knife. And so this is a return to form for them. Uh, they recently, uh, two years ago, came out with the 87, which was also, I'm calling it integral, an integral uh, Balasong. And it was an enormous uh, Warncliffe, just a beautiful knife. And if I had the, the 650 bucks to drop on it, I would have gotten two of them. Uh, but uh, Really, really beautiful knife. Now, this new one, the 85, uh, has a a drop point with a recurve. And thank you, Benchmade. I love a recurve. And people shy away from making it uh, because people shy away from sharpening them. Uh, but I love a recurve blade. And uh, and the new 85 has a drop point um, recurve with a fuller. Now, this knife is 4.4 inches long, that blade. Uh, the 87 was, I think, 4.6. So these are big knives, mm-hmm. and uh, they are clipless, or it is clipless. The 85, and it comes with a with a with a belt pouch. So apparently, people who are balisong flippers, and maybe someone out there who's listening who happens to be a balisong flipper, can let me know. But you know, I can open up a balisong in a you know and look pretty cool a couple of different ways. But there, there are people, as you know and seen, who just do crazy tricks, and and their whole thing is about is about opening and closing balisongs and mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. So this knife, uh, apparently, people who are really into the flipping aren't necessarily into using them as EDCs. Uh, this, if you like a big EDC, is is set up very well for that. But I'm interested if anyone is listening who's a who's a quote unquote bally boy. Let me know. Are you? Do you use these things for EDC? Do you carry them with the intent to use them, or do you carry them just to you know flip them and enjoy that flipping action? So kind of interested. But anyway, the new Benchmade eighty five. Interesting little footnote here, Jim. Um, they just released a knife that we talked about on Thursday Night Knives last week. The Meat Crafter, uh, Steve Ranella's knife. That came out in S forty five VN, and that's a that's you know the only other people who are using that right now are Spyderco. And that's a brand new splashy steel. It's kind of the um, the update, the evolution of S thirty five VN. And uh, I was expecting this eighty five uh, integral bally song, the eighty five billet, to to also be an S forty five VN. It's a it's a splashy product. I thought they would use the splashy steel, and it kind of makes sense. It's kind of a, an EDC type steel, uh, but they went with S thirty V, which is sadly lacking. Now, of course, I'm just joking. It, it, it's an awesome steel. I love S30V, but it just goes to show how crazy we get about steel sometimes. It'd be interesting to hear from Bally Song flippers if they uh, just like flipping and showing what they can do with them, or if they actually use them, as you said, for an everyday carry. So uh, if you are one, call us at 724 466 4487, 724 466 4487, and uh, let us know your thoughts on uh, Bally Songs and uh, what you do with them. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. And we are here on the Knife Junkie podcast, episode number 121. You can find the show notes and other things at thenifejunkie.com slash 121, thenifejunkie.com slash 121. And Bob, uh, time in the show where we get to talk or you get to talk about your state of the collection. Maybe one day I'll talk about the state of my growing collection that I probably have, I don't know, 
getting close to 10 knives, I reckon. Yes. So, you know, hey, you got to start somewhere. That's a round number. Yeah. Uh, bad Monkey. I love the name. What's what's the update on the Bad Monkey? Okay. So if you're following the soap opera, well, that's what the state of the collection is for. I talk about my collection, but also I talk about incoming things and purchase problems. And uh, if you recall, I, I ordered a, um, a Southern Grind Bad Monkey uh, from a gentleman on Blade Forums. The whole The whole interaction went great, except when it came time for me to give him my address, I gave him, well, the wrong address. <laughs> You fat fingered it. Yeah, I fat fingered it and I didn't double check my work, which is something I lecture my daughters about all the time. You got to check your work. First time out is just a pat, you know, it's just a first draft. You got to check it and edit. And blah, 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 blah. Well, I didn't listen to my own advice, which, you know, I, I, I find happens sometimes. Cost you in the end. Yeah, it cost me in the end because the, the knife came here, it bounced back. Well, it didn't. It didn't come here. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I went to it my came post some, office. somewhere around. <laughs> right. It came to the general area. I ran to the post office, did some begging, and they were really trying to help me. But it was already back on a truck, mm. you know. And so I had to reach out to the seller, and uh, you know, I sent him another ten bucks to, send, you know, so he didn't have to absorb that cost. Uh, and I just felt like a an a, an idiot for not. Check, check your work, people. Just check your work, especially if it's an address. This is the second time this has happened. When I got my my light foot element coming in uh, from Canada last fall, it was the same thing. And, and I, I fat fingered it in the same way, put the same wrong address in. And it just so happened that I intercepted the DHL van when it was on my street. Mm. It was like a train robbery practically, but I chased the guy down and, and he, you know, we worked it out. Luckily, it wasn't during coronavirus time where you had your face mask on yeah. and all that. That would have sunglasses. Yeah. What? <laughs> Definitely a lesson there, uh, not to fat finger the address, but also double check. But you would think you would have the potential to fat finger or get the wrong address for somebody else, not your own home address. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> and twice, Bob. <laughs> yeah. No. Sorry. Well, I, I learn things slowly and by mistake. So. Okay, Bob. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Continue. <laughs> There's nothing more to say. I'm really looking forward to this. And uh, to the gentleman who sold this to me, you know who you are, Rod. Thank you so much for uh, accommodating my absent-mindedness. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for your patience, Rob. We, I know Bob definitely appreciates that. And uh, can we look forward to seeing a review on the Knife Chunkies YouTube channel when it uh, comes in or an unboxing or something like that? Yes. Yes. I'm very interested in this knife. have been interested in uh, Southern Grind ever since I learned about them. I think it's a cool story. Country country singer star uh, Zach Brown loves knives, loves Emerson knives, and started that company. So those those are the two reasons. Mm. It's, a, it's a it's a superstar who does something else, but is very interested in knives and is making great ones here in the states. Uh, but also he's he at least some of these first models were very heavily inspired by Emerson knives. So I'm interested to see how he's interpreted that. And uh, yeah. And thirdly, uh, the proceeds from this venture, a lot of uh, the Bad Monkey proceeds go to a um, summer camp, I think it is. A, it's a, I, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it's a thing that helps kids and I think helps connect urban kids with nature, something like that. Mm, cool. Um, so, yeah, I like, I like that. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, maybe we'll have a link to their uh, website in the show notes and uh, folks can, uh, can learn more about that again. Uh, knifejunkie.com slash 121, knifejunkie.com slash 121, show notes and links to a lot of the stuff that we talk about. You mentioned Emerson, so that'd be a great uh, transition into the uh, Emerson Appalachian. Yeah. Uh, as you say here in the show notes that I'm looking at, quote, it's a great EDC and light woods blade. Okay. Well, light woods, because I only do light woods, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I know everyone uh, might be getting sick of hearing about this Appalachian that I bought from Slicey Dicey, but uh, I got it really because it's another sweet Emerson with an amazing Bowie-shaped blade, and that's about as deep as my need or desire for it went. But actually having it and carrying it, I am loving this knife. The chisel edge on this uh, Appalachian is by far the sharpest Emerson out of box uh, that I've ever gotten, and the... Um, Sometimes you'll find that if a chisel edge is too obtuse, uh, it tracks oddly through materials like cardboard, for instance. It'll start to curve in the opposite direction of the bevel uh, if it's a real obtuse grind. This is not. This is a very shallow uh, final edge. If you look at it, um, 
it it rises high up the um, the blade, <laughs> so it's a very very thin behind the edge chisel. That was blade. easy for you to describe. <laughs> I can see why now you're a knife reviewer. Oy vey. yeah, with with <laughs> pictures it'd be better. But uh, let me just say that in using it this weekend, I used it a lot this past weekend. Uh, we had tons and tons of cardboard. I cut it all up with an Appalachian. I had all these other knives arrayed around me so I could try different grinds and stuff. Right. And I, I kept coming back to the Appalachian, wow. which is which is new for me. Hmm. Now, I also said light woods because, uh, you know, my daughters and I go go to the, our park a lot, uh, almost daily. And uh, I always labor over what knife I'm going to bring. And lately I've been bringing this, uh, the Appalachian, because it's a really good whittler. Oddly hmm. enough, and I guess it shouldn't be odd. It is a chisel edge, and we we know how sharp they can be. We know chisels are for cutting material, but uh, I, I just never think of my Emersons as woods blades. I think of them as like fighting knives. Uh, but this thing has just been really fun to just carry around in EDC. Might be a right. little big for some people, but if you like the size of it, it's almost a four inch blade, um, and you like the aggressive look of it. It does look aggressive, but it is a very comfortable and a uh, comfortable knife to use and a very, very nice slicey blade. Okay. Well, there you go. Sure. It's not the last we'll hear of the Emerson Appalachian, but uh good, uh, good uh, info about the Emerson Appalachian there that, uh, that Bob has in his collection. And uh, as you have heard over the past several episodes, uh, definitely is uh, glad that he added it to his collection. <laughs> Have a knife you want featured or reviewed? Call the Knife Junkies 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and let us know. Moving on from State of the Collection, as we get ready to kind of wrap up this episode of the show, a couple of um, miscellaneous things, I guess, we wanted to kind of talk about. This is the Knife Junkie podcast. I know we talk a lot about New York City knife laws and just a lot of stuff going on in New York City with knives. And uh, definitely wanted to uh, talk about this story, Bob. A um, a New York City cop was actually attacked with a knife. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we mentioned New York City a lot because of the crazy knife laws and because I lived there and 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 cherished my time there. Happy it's in the past, got to say. But uh, I just wanted to point out a video that I saw on uh, the Knife Magazine uh, news feed. You know, they have a great news feed over there at, mm -hmm. at uh, Knife Magazine. And it was a... a security camera video from across an intersection. So it's not very close up, but it's of a New York City uh, police officer standing uh, on a corner. I think he was part of an anti-looting detail. And you see a guy come around the corner and just rush him and stab him in the neck. Mm. And uh, and the person who did this, um, they ended up shooting him a couple of times. I'm not sure if he died. And I, the police officer did not die. I don't know what his current state is, but this was right. on this past Wednesday. This was a week ago at this point. Uh, but, you know, uh, I'm not going to go into details of uh, of what the suspect was like or, you know, what they suspect of him. But in the end, it was a cheesy kitchen knife. And I'm only bringing that up to say that that whenever I consider how knife laws are written and uh, and, and what they assume – it, it always baffles my mind because every heinous, hideous story like this that I hear just always involves a kitchen knife that was purchased at the dollar store. You know what I mean? So it makes me upset that this kind of thing happens, that this guy who is out there, this police officer risking his life to, to protect property in a neighborhood was jacked by some fool with a kitchen knife. Uh, and it also makes me uh, upset when, you know, when we talk to people like Doug Ritter and, and they have such a hard time just trying to speak common sense uh, to legislators about about the knife collecting and knife using world and stuff like this right. gets attributed to us. Right. Well, you know, the headline is, you know, cop attacked by knife. You know, they don't go into the details. You know, there's not kitchen knife or whatever. So, yeah, a lot of uh, bad publicity that way, I guess, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, my, my heart goes out to him and his family. And, Absolutely. I mean, that, what a, what a ter terrifying thing to, a, to occur, to have someone, mm -hmm. you know, just attack you with a knife. Well, thoughts, uh, thoughts with him and uh, any others that have been the experiencing, uh, violence, of course, uh, regardless of it's a knife or a gun or whatever, just, uh, yeah, let's, uh, you know, in the, in the famous words, let's all just try to get along, you know, yeah. <laughs> a little better and, uh, be safe. Yeah. 
Uh, but, you know, we mentioned knives in New York and all that kind of stuff. And a great time to just kind of mention knife rights. Uh, they've got their big Ultimate Steel promo, their fundraiser going on. So uh, definitely a chance to uh, support them if you haven't already. Yeah, that's right. There's not too much time left to get in on it. Uh, you can always give money to knife rights. But right now they have their their drive their fund drive and there are thank you gifts, lots of great thank you gifts. So yeah. if you can give any money, if they're tonight, still available. Yeah. yeah. If, and if you have the means uh, this year to give, give something and uh, you know, he's going to keep fighting for our, our knife rights. Knife rights.org, knife rights.org or favorite search engine, just Google ultimate steel 2020. And Bob, that Waskoi Wabbit got away again. Elma Fudd here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's a little something you want to tell us about. Well, that. just on a lighter note, I'm sure many of you have heard, but HBO is is rebooting the Looney Tunes, my favorite cartoons. I mean, I I grew up in the 70s. Uh, you know, my cartoon days were in the 70s, so that Looney Tunes were on constant replay. I'm a foghorn leghorn man yeah. myself. <laughs> yeah, coming from the south, I bet. <laughs> uh, Bugs Bunny was always my favorite. You know, he's just yeah. a total smartass, and 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 he can always outwit. You know his his adversaries, and chief among them is uh, Elmer Fudd and HBO. Uh, as they reboot, Elmer Fudd is doing the good thing. They're they're showing us their virtue by removing Elmer Fudd's gun. Oh, okay. Uh, How's but, it going to catch that wascoey wabbit? You know, in a much more horrifying <laughs> way. This is hilarious. They are replacing his gun with a scythe, a scythe. So now Elmer Fudd is going to be. Trying to decapitate, be him that Wesley <laughs> Webber, <laughs> and 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 uh, so to me, it's just it's hilarious. They're they're going from from a long range weapon, you know, that depersonalizes the murder, <laughs> right, <laughs> or the hunting, to an up close and personal, you know, look you in the eye. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to watch you as I shear your head off with this large curved blade. So right. it's really, it's really to me, it's just hilarious. Uh, you know, come on, HBO. <laughs> come on and and let's talk about the other violent content hbo puts out i mean come on did anyone see the red wedding was anyone is anyone familiar with the uh, game of thrones or anything else they produce sopranos sopranos way back in they're, the they're, they're gonna they're they're not gonna mess with their own content they're gonna mess with warner brothers and looney tunes that's mm. i'm offended this is offensive jim i'm so offended well let's write a letter to your congressman Bob. <laughs> yes. tell him to do something about it Hey, what, you know, as we're wrapping up here, what was your favorite Looney Tunes character? Love to to hear that. Not a knife-related question, but uh, call us 724-466-4487, 724-466-4487. We haven't uh, had a, a listener line call in a, a few weeks to play here on the podcast, so uh, if you're not going to call us about knives, <laughs> folks, give us a call about cartoons. What's your favorite cartoon character growing up? I want to hear it, 724-466-4487. All right, Bob, uh, kind of wrapping up here. Anything we haven't covered? Any final thoughts as we're uh, on the midweek uh, supplemental episode? Everyone, please join us on Saturday uh, for the town hall at noon Eastern Standard Time. Talk to Andrew Demko. Talk to Greg Lightfoot. And uh, just, you know, pick their minds and, and, and riddle them with questions. Looking forward to that. So for Mr. Knife Junkie himself, Bob DeMarco, I'm the knife newbie over here, Jim Person. Want to thank you for joining us on this midweek supplemental episode, number 121 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.